In this video we share the Virgin Mary in the Kingdom of the Divine Will. This is the title of a book written in 1932 that comprises meditations for the 31 days of May and October, dictated by the Virgin Mary to the servant of God Luisa Picaretta. This book gives us a little idea to what extent Mary was a close collaborator of God's plan for the salvation of mankind and, like her son Jesus, she is the perfect example and model of a life lived in the divine will. Here are large excerpts from this book. My child, that same infinite love of God, who wanted to use me in the redemption to make the eternal word descend upon earth, calls me into the field once again, entrusting to me the difficult task, the sublime mandate to form the children of the kingdom of his divine will on earth. Therefore, with maternal care I put myself to work, preparing for you the way which will lead you to this happy kingdom. Wanting to bestow upon the creature's surprising graces, which he has not conceded in the whole history of the world, God wants to make known the prodigies of the divine fiat, and all that it can work in the creature who lets herself be dominated. This is why he wants to place me in the sight of all, as model, since I had the great honor to form all my life in the divine will. Now, my child, know that as soon as I was conceived, I put the divinity in feast. Heaven and earth made feast, and recognized me as their queen. But while all was smile and feast between me and them, I saw that they could not trust me if they did not receive a proof. The divine will asked me, as proof, to surrender my human will to it. The divine fiat said to me, I do not ask of you a fruit, as with Adam, no, no, I ask for your will. You will keep it, as if you did not have it under the empire of my divine will, which will be your life, and will feel confident to make of you whatever it wants. I owe everything to the fiat, I know nothing else, all of my sublime qualities for which the Holy Church so much honors me, are nothing other than the effects of that divine will which dominated me, reigned and lived in me. This is why I yearn so much that that which produced in me so many qualities and admirable effects as to astonish heaven and earth, be known. As soon as the Supreme Being asked for my human will, I understood the great evil that the human will can do in the creature, and how it puts everything in danger, even the most beautiful works of her Creator. The creature, with her human will, is all vacillations, she is weak, inconstant, disordered. And this, because God, in creating her, had created her, as though by nature, united with his divine will, in such a way that it was to be the strength, the prime motion, the support, the food and the life of the human will. Therefore, by not giving life to the divine will in our own, we reject the goods we received from God in the creation, and the rights we received, by nature, in the act in which we were created. Oh, how well I understood the grave offense that is given to God, and the evils that pour upon the creature. I had such great horror and fear of doing my will, and I feared with reason, because Adam too was created innocent by God, Yet, by doing his own will, into how many evils did he not plunge himself, and all the generations? Therefore, I, your mamma, taken by terror, and even more by love for my Creator, swore never to do my will. And to be more sure and to better attest my sacrifice to the one who had given me so many seas of graces and privileges, I took my human will and bound it to the foot of the divine throne, in continuous homage of love and sacrifice, promising never to use my will, not even for one instant of my life, but always that of God. My child, to you my sacrifice of living without my will may not seem great, but I tell you that there is no sacrifice similar to mine, even more, all other sacrifices of the whole history of the world can be called shadows in comparison with mine. To sacrifice oneself for one day, now yes, now no, is easy, but to sacrifice oneself in every instant, in every act, even in the very good one wants to do, for one's entire life, without ever giving life to one's own will, is the sacrifice of sacrifices, it is the greatest proof that can be offered, it is the purest love, filtered through the divine will itself, that can be given to our Creator. This sacrifice is so great that God cannot ask anything more of the creature, nor can she find how to sacrifice more for her Creator. God was waiting for my test, that is, that a creature would live without will, in order to adjust the balance with mankind, and to assume the attitude of clemency and mercy. God asked of me a proof which he has asked of no one. 
And he did this with justice and with highest wisdom, because since the eternal word had to come down into me, not only was it not decorous that he find original sin in me, but it was also not decorous for him to find a human will operating in me. It would have been too unbefitting for God to descend into a creature in whom the human will reigned. Here is why he wanted a test from me, and for all of my life, my will, in order to secure the kingdom of the divine will within my soul. Once he secured this in me, God could do with me anything he wanted, he could give me everything, and I can say that he could deny me nothing. Who can tell you all that this divine will did in me? It raised me so high, it embellished me so much, that the very angels remain mute, nor do they know where to start to talk about me. Now, my dearest child, you must know that as soon as the divine fiat had me take possession of all, I felt I possessed everything and everyone. With its power, immensity and all-seeingness, the divine will enclosed all creatures within my soul, and I felt a little place in my heart for each one of them. My dear child, come into the arms of your mama, and pay attention in listening to me, you will hear the unheard of prodigies that the divine fiat worked in your celestial mama. As I took possession of the kingdom of the divine will, its steps within me ended, and its full life began, whole and perfect, within my soul. Oh, at what divine heights was I placed by the Most High? The heavens could neither reach me nor contain me. The light of the sun was little before my light. No created thing could reach me. I crossed the divine seas as if they were my own, my Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, longed for me to be in their arms, to enjoy their little daughter. They felt, coming out from me, waves of divine love, chaste fragrances and unusual joys, starting from within the heaven which their own divine will had formed in my littleness, to the extent that they could not stop repeating, all beautiful, all pure, all holy, is our little daughter. Her words are chains that bind us, her gazes are darts that wound us, her heartbeats are arrows that, darting upon us, make us go into delirium of love. They felt the power, the strength of their divine will coming out from me, which rendered us inseparable, and they called me our invincible daughter, who will bring victory even over our divine being. The divinity, taken by excessive love for me, told me, our beloved daughter, our love cannot resist, it feels suffocated if we do not entrust to you our secrets. Therefore we elect you our faithful secretary, we want to entrust to you our sorrows and our decrees. We want to save man at any cost, look how he is falling, his rebellious will drags him continuously toward evil. Without the life, the strength and the support of our divine will, he has deviated from the path of his creator, and walks crawling on the earth, weak, ill, and full of all vices. But there are no other ways to save him, no other ways out, other than for the eternal word to descend, assume his guise, his miseries, his sins upon himself, become his brother, conquer him through love and unheard of pains, and give him so much confidence as to be able to bring him back again into our paternal arms. Oh, how we grieve over the destiny of man! Our sorrow is great, nor could we confide it to anyone, because not having a divine will to dominate them, they could never have understood, either our sorrow, or the grave evil of man fallen into sin. To you, who possess our fiat, is allowed the ability to understand it, therefore, as if to our own secretary, we want to unveil our secrets to you, and place the scepter of command into your hands, that you may dominate and rule over all, and that your dominion may win over God and men, bringing them to us as reborn children, within your maternal heart. Who can tell you, dear child, all that my heart felt at these divine words? A vein of intense sorrow opened in me, and I committed myself, even at the cost of my life, to winning over God and the creature, and to uniting them together. Without knowing then that I was going to be the mother of the divine word, I felt a double maternity in me, maternity toward God, in order to defend his just rights, and maternity toward the creatures, to bring them to safety. I felt I was the mother of all. The divine will which reigned in me, and which knows not how to do isolated works, brought God and all creatures from all centuries into me. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you.